So growing up, Sweden was held as the example of the socialist utopia. It wasn't heavy-handed, it wasn't the Soviet Union, it wasn't poor like China. No, it wasn't Cuba. No, this is how socialism is done. My friend, uh, uh, help me out with... with sure. Uh, Anders Ingemarsson. 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 That is a Swedish name. That is a very Swedish name. From what I understand, if I went to your house, it's all IKEA everywhere. Not yeah. a single thing from any place but IKEA. Is that well, right? there were a couple of things we couldn't find at IKEA, but otherwise you're right. Yeah. All right, you uh, have a website, separatestateandtheeconomy.com, to separate it. But I, I want to I want to talk to you first about growing up in Sweden and help me understand because you guys gave us Volvos and ABBA music. It was perfect. So socialism does work. Bernie like socialism works in your home country. Well, that is not exactly true. So let me give you a couple of points. It's Sweden is not a socialist country. It is like the US, a mixed economy with a big welfare state component, education, health care, where the government takes care of you. But there is also a significant element of capitalism in there that has brought about the Volvos, the Saabs, the Ikeas of the world over the last 100, 120 years. Sweden started out actually in the late 19th century in a similar fashion to how the U.S. developed. It was a very free country, very low tax rates, very low regulations. And up until the 1950s, 1960s, Sweden was trailing the U.S. very closely. And it helped, obviously, that Sweden managed to stay out of both world wars. Uh, that gave them a head start after 1945. Then in the 50s and 60s, things started to change. And the democratic socialist experiment started in earnest. Massive government takeovers of industry. Give me a couple examples. What, what industry? Uh, healthcare, for sure. Uh, yeah, healthcare, for sure. Uh, education was public all along. Uh, steel industry. The steel industry. Yes. Big parts of energy industry were, were socialized. And other, some other major industries too. But in addition to that, regulations increased. So even though companies stayed private nominally, they were so heavily regulated that they had their hands tied, basically. Now, growing up in the 70s and 80s, I remember all the great things about Sweden, which was healthcare was free, uh, that you took care of people, that people didn't have to work long, awful hours. Everyone seemed to be, seemed to be doing really well. And then later on, I started hearing stories of it's hard to be a doctor there. It was uh, hard to make a living as a, uh, as a doctor there because of the price controls and other things. Things started turning bad. Give me what, what did all that nationaliz uh, nationalizing industry and regulation, what did it bring to Sweden? Well, what, it, was it sustainable? No, that's the short answer. It was not sustainable. So when the 80s came around, Sweden was in a massive crisis uh, financially because even though taxes were really high, taxes were not enough to pay for this welfare state expansion. And also and when taxes are high and businesses can move, they're, they're going to go to some place that it isn't all that high. So did businesses leave Sweden? Yes, there were businesses leaving Sweden. So the couple of the more famous examples are IKEA, for instance, that was run from a foundation in the Netherlands that had low tax rates. Uh, Tetra Pak is another big Swedish company that moved abroad, and, and quite a few moved abroad. But it's interesting. You may ask, why did so many stay? And obviously, they have all their infrastructure in place and so on and so forth. But one important aspect of Swedish politics over the last 100 years is that the politicians in charge have realized that they depend on industry as the source of the money that they want to redistribute and spend. So Sweden have, has had relatively low corporate tax rates all along. All along. All right, so the the problem with socialism is you can't redistribute money and you can't redistribute wealth until somebody else creates it. And when a larger part of your economy is in the distribution business, 
not the creation business, uh, it, it catches up with you. As, as Thatcher said, sooner or later you run out of other people's money. Exactly. So did Sweden run out of other people's money? Sweden ran out, ran out of other people's money, definitely, yes. So in the 80s um, and even in the 70s, there were massive devaluations of the currency. Now that was another trick to promote the a small country heavily dependent on exports. When you devaluate your currency, your products become cheaper abroad. So that was one trick of trying to stay in the game, so to speak. But it came to a head in the late 80s, early 90s, and the Swedes had to go back and reevaluate what they what, were what doing. What happened? Was, was there an economic collapse, or were things Basically, getting Basically, uh, an economic collapse, yes. What did so, that look like? Uh, I mean, similar to what it looked like in the U.S. in the early 80s, if you remember. Oh, I when, remember uh, it well. With Volcker and Reagan, and spiked the interest rates for a period of time just to get things back under control and that's basically what happened in the Sweden in, in Sweden in the early 90s. Is it fair to say not only did you have all this government regulation, government taxation, uh, but also you had such loose monetary policy that sooner or later you, you can't keep making more money without, without there being a problem. You can't make it looser and looser so people buy your stuff. I worry about this, of what's going on right now, uh -huh. as our Fed keeps printing more money mm -hmm. and, and doing all sorts of devaluation tricks. Um, so you hit bottom, then what? Then, for pragmatic reasons, purely pragmatic reasons, the Swedes have not re-evaluating the model, if you like, but for pragmatic reasons, they went back, they cut back on some of the welfare like state what? programs. What they, do? Uh, they changed retirement from being uh, contribution based or from to being contribution based from being benefit based uh, that's huge and for yeah. people who don't don't get that mm -hmm. it's the difference when you work for the government here in Colorado you get a defined benefit when you retire we guarantee to give mm -hmm. you this much money whether we can or not we don't know but we're just going to pay it out to right. you and you get to retire with you know 80 percent of your last paycheck you're going to get that for the rest of your life plus free health care it's 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 obscenely uh luxurious whereas most people put money aside and they retire with like 20 percent of enough to make 20 percent of their paycheck when they mm -hmm. retire and they got to keep keep working so if we move people to a contribution-based system we build that up because it's a lie these pensions can't go on forever did you run out of pension money yes and, and, and just to, to follow up on your, your comment there, here it's not just the pension systems as we know them, the Paras and, and other right. more or less, well, semi, <coughs> excuse me, private systems. The whole, whole Social Security med model works like that. And that is obviously a huge time bomb in this country. Now, they changed to contribution based in Sweden, but they are, that didn't solve the problem. It kind of, Kept put some checks on it, but as we speak, they're talking about increasing the retirement age more because there won't be enough money. I was out forward. in Copenhagen uh, a year or two back, and I found that you could, they, they've, they're also cutting back on some of these benefits. You could stay on unemployment for up to two years. And with, um, with rent control, with a, with a free place to live, free food, free all this. So people after college, instead of getting jobs you know, at the grocery store or the Starbucks, they didn't want that, they would just stay on unemployment for a couple of years and not, and not get involved in the, in, in the workforce creating wealth. Same thing happened in Sweden? Absolutely. Can we, what kind of benefits could, could a citizen have? I don't know the exact details, but uh, it's all variations on the theme, right? So. I don't know if it was two years, like in Denmark, or if it was one year. It was definitely a lot longer than what we currently have in the U.S. Um, so, so in principle, no big difference, but um, still, it's the same. It, all right. You said something interesting. You said pragmatically they did this. Are you telling me there was not this ideological awakening that socialism doesn't pay for itself? We've got, we've got to change the way we think. Or did the bill just come due and they were forced to make austerity measures, for lack of a better term, in order 
in order to keep things rolling. Yeah, the bill came due. That's, that's what happened. And the philosophical or political ideas underlying the society are very entrenched. The idea that there should be a welfare state that takes care of you, that there should be the safety net. Um, and nobody is really questioning that. Now, we have a lot of that here, too. And as we know, there are a lot of politicians that are pushing for more of it. But for me, born in Sweden, now being American, what I see here is that at least we have the debate. We have a healthy ideologi ideological debate here, which is completely absent in Sweden and pretty much most of Europe. When you see presidential candidates uh, saying, we're going to take care of your health care bill, we're going to take care of your college education and, and make, it, make it free, at the same time we're going to stop energy development, fossil fuels, all the rest, what's your message, having seen it in Switzerland, what's your message to America? My message is that we're seeing this left and right discussion back and forth. But we're totally forgetting the individual. And really what the battle should be about is between the individual and the collective. And the collective represented by what the left stands for or very often what the right stands for. That debate is completely forgotten here. Or, and I think there is a big market for you and others to try to put that focus back on the individual because the basic question is really who should be in charge? Is it you as the individual who should be in charge of your life? Personally, I think committees should be in charge because <laughs> other people know better than you and I what's best for you and I. People want to get more information, they go to separate State and separate state and the economy dot com. Separate state and economy dot com. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. We'll see you next week.